Welcome in Program News from Poland Business and Law, which is a synthesis for foreigners acting as board members in Polish companies, foreign investors in Poland and their foreign advisors. In this episode, my guest, Wojciech Marszałkowski, advocate and member of the Wrodziński and Partners Tax Practice, will discuss compliance obligations relating to transfer pricing. But first, a handful of information about the current state of the Polish economy. During the pandemic, it was difficult to consume services, so the demand has shifted towards commodities. Poland is currently benefiting from the fact that over the last 30 years, it has become a production hub for Western Europe, primarily for Germany. We owe it to the young, well-educated and inexpensive workforce, the location in the heart of Europe, which gives easy access to Western markets, political stability, rational spending of funds from the European Union, including on highways, and the activity of foreign investors. The demand for employees remains strong. This is confirmed by the dynamics of wage growth. In July, the average salary in the enterprise sector was 9% higher than a year ago. People earn as if there was no crisis. In July and August, the tourist towns in the north on the Baltic Sea and in the south in the mountains were besieged. Poles, discouraged by the limitations related to the pandemic, less often decided to go on holiday abroad. They spent money domestically. On the other hand, the pandemic drastically reduced the revenues of hotels in Kraków, which were cut off from tourists from Great Britain, and hotels in Warsaw, Wrocław, Katowice and Poznań, which were deprived of business customers. It is estimated that 100,000 employees left the hotel industry permanently for fear of unemployment. Even so, there are no massive hotel bankruptcies and spectacular distressed asset deals. The real estate market is booming. The demand for housing exceeds the supply. Developers sell flats already at the design stage or holes in the ground. After five quarters of the pandemic, the average transaction prices of new apartments in Warsaw are higher by as much as 9%. Almost zero interest on bank deposits combined with the highest inflation in 20 years, 4 or 5%. Low unemployment, wage growth, the cheapest loans in history, increasing credit worthiness and an average rental re return between 3.4 and 5% per annum, depending on the city, make people withdraw money from banks and buy flats, which are treated as capital investments and an additional source of income. The value of mortgage loans granted in July this year was 30% higher than in July 2019, i.e. before the pandemic. It is a historical record. However, 60% of housing transactions in the primary market are financed with cash from savings and not loans. Therefore, even in the case of an increase in interest rates, the boom will not result in massive financial destabilization of home buyers. This situation prompts developers to raise margins and increase the number of investments. It seems that the only limitation is uh, the decreasing availability of attractive land in cities. As in Germany and Great Britain, we now have high inflation in Poland. In August, the consumer price index increased year-on-year year by 5.4%, the most in 20 years, while the goal of the National Bank of Poland is to maintain inflation at 2.5%. Despite this, the Monetary Policy Council does not raise interest rates. It explains this by the fact that the rise of inflation does not result in the excessive availability of cheap money but from the increase in fuel and commodity prices, i.e. factors beyond the influence of the Council. The Council does not want to raise interest rates at present so as not to stifle consumption and to be sure that the, the economic recovery will persist. Moreover, temporarily increased inflation is beneficial for the state budget. It increases revenue without rising tax rates. OK, now Wojciech will speak about transfer pricing in Polish law. Hi. Transfer pricing is one of the focal points of taxation in Poland. The arm's length principle underlying transfer pricing requires related parties to provide products, services or loans to each other on terms that would have been agreed upon between independent parties. When they follow the arm's length principle, taxable profits recorded by each party will not be distorted by their membership in the same capital group. The arm's length principle must not only be followed, but also be clearly seen to be followed. This comes at the cost of compliance efforts. In this respect, I'll touch on three issues. 
basic compliance obligations, selected peculiarities of Polish regulations and transfer pricing documentation for a group of companies. Basic compliance obligations for transfer pricing include three items. For most taxpayers, each must be completed by the end of this year. First, taxpayers must prepare documentation describing most cross-border transactions and some domestic transactions if their value exceeds 10 million złotys for the supply of goods or financing or 2 million złotys for services and other transactions. This doesn't sound like much. The description must include general information about the substance of a transaction and an economic analysis proving that it is consistent with market realities. Second, the taxpayer should complete and file an appropriate tax return with the National Revenue Administration. It includes basic information about the transaction and financial performance of the enterprise. Third, the taxpayer should file a statement with a relevant tax office declaring that the local file was completed and that prices were set at an arm's length. The official statement can only be signed by specific persons, for companies, their management board members. Why is this important? A false statement or late filing is subject to criminal liability. Clearly, management board members are responsible for overseeing compliance with transfer pricing obligations. Reliance on patterns is not enough in a dynamically evolving tax environment. For example, it is quite easy in Poland to fall under the obligation to prepare a local file for transactions with related enterprises. An obligation to prepare a local file may also arise in the case of a transaction worth over 100,000 zlotys with an entity located in a tax haven. Also, don't be surprised when someone tells you to prepare a local file for a transaction with an unrelated party not located in a tax haven. Starting from 2021, for transactions worth over half a million złotys, you'll need to take additional steps to exclude the possibility that the ultimate beneficiary of the transaction is located in a tax haven. Otherwise, the transaction may need to be covered by a local file as an indirect transaction with a tax haven. Taxpayers are expected to request their counterparties to disclose dealings with entities in tax havens as well as their nature. Obtaining such information could certainly be a problem. Additionally, there is a rebuttable presumption that a transaction took place with a tax haven if the counterparty merely dealt with an entity located in a tax haven. In addition to a local file, taxpayers may be required to prepare a master file. Such file includes information on the entity preparing a local file and the group of companies to which it belongs. It contains much detail on business and its policy on intercompany inter transactions. Two elements jointly trigger the obligation to prepare a master file. Consolidation of financial statements and generation of consolidated annual revenue exceeding 200 million złotys. According to a proposed law, failure to complete a master file will be subject to criminal fiscal liability. Individuals may be punished with a fine of up to almost 30 million Polish złotys. For other updates concerning expected changes in law, please refer to our knowledge sharing platform in principle. Thank you for taking your time to watch this episode. See you soon.